Hey guys, it's Chris from Highland Guitars and you're watching another fascinating episode of Luthier Quick Tips. Are you one of those guitar builders or guitar players that insists that all your instruments have maximum sustain? If so, that's what I'm going to talk about in this video. Specifically, the, the factors in the guitar that you can adjust, manipulate, change, or swap out in order to increase sustain. But before I do that, I want to talk about some of the factors which have little or no impact on sustain because it seems like a lot of people out there tend to focus and fixate on factors which really don't do that much when it comes to sustain and they're just wasting their time. What I'm talking about, first of all, is the selection of the wood that you use to build your guitar. And that can be the neck, the fretboard, the body. I'm also talking about, you know, things like the angle of the headstock and whether the strings pass through the body or are anchored to the bridge or to a tailpiece. Those factors just don't have that much impact on sustain. And it can be argued that they don't have that much impact on tone, but that's a whole nother video. Um, if they did, and this is where I can prove my point, if they did, then every guitar made would start to look the same because every guitar manufacturer and every guitar builder would come to the same conclusions about the kind of wood that's used, um, how the neck is installed into the body, and whether or not there's an angle on the headstock and how much that angle is. Obviously, guitars aren't made that way. They aren't all the same. They're different. And that's because most experienced guitar builders and guitar manufacturers know that those issues don't play a significant role in the sustain of the guitar or the tone. There are, however, several factors which do have a significant impact on the sustain of your guitar. And these are factors which you can manipulate. And I'm gonna start out up here at the nut. The nut has a significant role. And it, as you know, you, the, the nut can be made from a variety of different materials. It can be bone, uh, graphite, corian, brass, steel, and there's probably some other materials that folks have used. Uh, which material sustains the best? Well, unfortunately, because of the variables in the material, it's difficult for me to say specifically which one you should choose to get maximum sustain. I could lay out five bone nut blanks purchased from different suppliers, and they are all gonna yield different amounts of sustain. And that's just because of the density of the material, where it was cut from, the health of the animal that it was removed from, and hopefully it is an animal. Uh, the same is also true with, for example, uh, graphite. I could purchase graphite from several different manufacturers, but the graphite, it's going to vary. One manufacturer is going to have a different composition than another. Now, if I purchased all of my graphite from the same manufacturer every single time, there's a better chance of uh, maintaining consistent, reliable, predictable performance. But uh, as you can see, it becomes difficult to say specifically which material is going to yield the best sustain. Just know that the material that has that is harder and has greater density is going to yield better sustain. So if you think your guitar is having sustain issues and you're thinking it might be the nut, one thing to consider is the composition of the material that the nut was made out of. Another issue with the nut is the slots. I've always been a big advocate for minimal contact between the string and the nut. The, where the string contacts the nut should be right at the very face of the nut. And from there towards the tuner, on the bottom and the sides, there should be minimal contact. On the sides, there should be like an air gap, a very small air gap on each side. And from that point of contact at the face toward the tuners on the bottom of the slot, it should fall away from the string. The more contact there is, the greater the potential for the nut to absorb the string's vibration. And when that happens, you're taking that vibration away 
from the pickups because it's that vibration that the pickups detect. It um, affects the magnetic field and excites that field so that it generates the signal that heads out to our amplifier. And if you take those vibrations out of the string, they aren't there to excite that magnetic field. So you want those vibrations as they travel along the string to hit the nut and then bounce back into the string and stay there. But if there's too much contact, those vibrations are going to be absorbed by the nut and they're going to be transferred to the wood where they get lost. They're no longer available for the pickup to detect. So minimal contact. Now the next uh, uh, element that we can talk about are the frets. And that what we look at is um, the composition of the fret wire and the shape of the fret wire and then how that fret is installed into the fretboard. So as far as composition is concerned, we all know that uh, you can buy stainless steel frets as well as nickel silver frets. And there are some other fret uh, wire materials that are starting to appear. I've seen some brass and I've seen uh, titanium. And there are also, if you really study how frets are made, there are different compositions of stainless steel and different compositions of nickel silver. And those compositions can actually affect the sustain of the guitar. So it's fairly minimal as far as its impact, but since we can make a decision here, it sort of makes sense to consider what the fret wire is made out of before we make our choice. And you know, some folks love stainless steel and other people hate it. So, you know, it just depends on um, your particular taste as to which or to what uh, composition you feel is going to work best, both in terms of tone and sustain. Uh, also related to the fret is the shape of the frets. Um, you again want minimal contact, just like you did with the nut. If there's too much contact, if the top surface of the fret wire has been worn down flat and there's a, a wider contact patch between the string and the fret, you're going to lose some sustain because the frets are going to absorb some of the vibrations from the string and transfer them to the wood where they are no longer available for the pickups to pick up. So you want just minimal contact and we achieve that through proper crowning. And you can either have a rounded crown which will minimize the contact between the string and the fret or you can have like a pyramid shape uh, which some folks like. So if you start to notice that your frets are, are getting flat on the top surface from wear or you're starting to get those grooves, you're probably going to notice that your guitar is not sustaining as well as it did when it was brand new. Now that's something that happens over a period of time and it may not be obvious to you, but I can guarantee you if you recrown those frets, you're going to have much better sustain. Now last uh, with regard to the frets is how they're installed into the wood. You want maximum uh, contact between the tang and the wood. So it's kind of the opposite of the contact patch between the string and the fret wire. You want as much contact as you can between the tang and the wood. And the reason for that is because it eliminates air gaps between the tang and the surrounding slot. Air gaps can rob a fret of sustain because the, um, the guitar, the fret wire will absorb the, um, the uh, vibrations of the string and you, you get this sort of dead fret sound. So, we try to maximize the amount of contact between the tang and the fret slot. And we do that by cutting a, slot, a fret slot that is just slightly smaller than the tang. And we also try to radius the bottom of the fret slot so that when the fret gets pressed into the slot, the bottom of the tang is in contact with that wood and there are no air gaps. Now that's kind of difficult to do. Uh, you can do it with a CNC machine. You can also do it with a fret saw that has a depth stop on it because it's going to follow the radius of the fretboard as you cut it. Uh, however, once you press in the fret, you can't be absolutely certain that the bottom of that tang is in t uh, contact with the bottom of the slot. You just hope that it is. And, you know, the process of, of sanding the fretboard can reduce some of that fret slot depth which can cause the tang to bottom out and stick up a little too high 
above the fretboard and issues like that. But uh, one way to ensure that there are no air gaps between the tang and the fret slot is to simply flood the slot with CA glue, thin CA glue. And then when you press the fret in, that thin CA glue through capillary action will fill all the air gaps and it will dry harder than the surrounding wood so you get much better sustain from that fret and it eliminates the potential for dead fret. Okay, so frets are out of the way. Now let's talk about the pickups. When it comes to the pickups, what you're most concerned with is the magnets that are used in the pickups. A really strong magnet is going to reduce sustain because what happens is that the magnet magnetizes the string. And as you play it, the strings, the magnetized string inside that, the, the magnets, uh, uh, magnetic field, it excites that magnetic field and that's what gets the um, signal, generates the signal in the coil and sends it out to the amplifier. Well, if the magnet is really strong, what happens is, is it acts like a mute. It prevents the string from vibrating. It sort of holds it in place. So when you pluck the string, as it decays, the magnet can actually have an effect of stopping the string from vibrating as it decays to a certain point. And what you'll hear is, you'll hear the string sustain after you pluck it, but then all of a sudden it disappears. It stops. So what you have to do is, if you've got a problem with sustaining in your guitar, consider the magnets that are in the pickup. If you're using a really strong magnet, like a ceramic magnet, it could be muting some of that sustain. Also, the position of the pickups. If you uh, position the pole pieces of the slugs too close to the strings, that can have an effect of dampening the string's vibration. It's just the way the magnet plays with the steel and the strings. So, um, that's something to consider with your pickups. Now, as far as the bridge is concerned, again, it comes back to the composition of the bridge's material, sort of like with the nut. You want a high quality alloy material. I like bell brass. I think it works really great for bridges. Uh, but you want a good quality uh, metal. Poor quality cast metals can have voids in them, and those voids can contribute to an absorption of the string's vibration as you play the guitar. So instead of the vibrations bouncing back to be uh, available to the pickups, they simply disappear into the uh, voids within that poor quality pot metal. So you want a good quality alloy for your bridge. You also want to minimize the amount of contact between the string and the bridge itself, just like you did at the nut. If the point of contact is um, too wide, if the contact patch is too great, that will encourage the alloy in the bridge to absorb some of those vibrations. And it doesn't matter whether it's a really high quality alloy or not. So you wanna minimize that point of contact. And when you do that, you keep those vibrations within the scale length of the bridge, which is where they should be. And that also um, kind of relates to how the string is anchored at the end of, of the string, whether it's a string through the body or uh, a tail piece. Once the, the string has reached or come in contact with the saddle, beyond that, it's inconsequential as far as its effect on sustain. It really is between the face of the saddle and the face of the nut. Anything that's happening beyond that is very minimal. And you don't really need to concern yourself too much with whether or not you're gonna have the strings anchored to the bridge or to a tailpiece or through the body. And you don't really have to worry too much about um, the, uh, the tuners and the headstock and all that and the angles, it's just not as critical. And I know I'm gonna get some pushback there from people, but I guarantee when you start to look at all the factors between the nut and the saddles on your bridge, you can make significant improvements that will greatly uh, affect the sustain of your guitar. 
So uh, I hope you found this video to be useful. You know, as usual, give it a thumbs up or post any comments or questions down below and either I or somebody in the community will answer them. And if you don't already subscribe to my channel and you like videos on building guitars and want to learn all you can about building uh, electric guitars, hit that subscribe button, click the bell for notifications. If you like what I'm doing here, um, purchase a t-shirt down in my uh, merch shelf down below or head over to eGuitarPlans.com and uh, purchase a plan for a guitar or some of the tools that I use to build guitars. And even if you don't build it, just know that your purchase is helping to support what I do here on this channel. At any rate, until the next episode, take care, stay safe, and I'll see you soon.